Nuno, first of all, we have to talk about what the whole world has been talking about when you released your comeback single, which is your remarkable guitar solo in Rise that really made big, big waves in the whole guitar community and beyond. Um, did you expect such a huge echo on, on the new single and especially on, on the guitar solo? Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you know what? It's 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 all it's a big surprise to me, and uh, it was a pleasant surprise. It's you know, as a guitar player, or as, you know, anything we do in an album, or the song, the solo, the melody, you know, you, you, it's on an album for a reason. You know, it, it, you go for blood, you passionate, you go in, and you hope the the world. And, and the world or two people connect with it. You know what I mean? That, that's your hope that your fans love it, but also maybe some new fans. But I had no idea it was going to be like that. And it was kind of confusing at first because, you know, back in the 1900s when we released an album, you know, it was, you released the album and it took you like six to eight months to find out if anybody liked it. You know, you have to go on tour. Yeah, radio has to play it. You see, look at the charts, you see sales. Now you release something And within 24 hours, the whole world lets you know whether they like you or not. And not only by listening or watching, but even telling you on comments what they love, what they don't love. Uh, it's a wild, it's a wild ride. And it's always a great ride when it's positive, like, like Rise was. Uh, meaning that I knew something was different. I, I, I was, my phone was blowing up like from people I haven't heard of since like high school, you know, like sort of like talking about the solo, talking about the song, but even more importantly, there was peers of mine, heroes of mine that were reaching out to me and saying crazy things, you know, like we know you could play, we know you could always play, but you know, you just raise the bar. This is, this is another level. And you know, all these, all these uh, reaction videos that they do now, different teachers, different guitar things. So part of me was like, Hmm, I've been doing these kind of solos for 40 years, I think, almost. And I don't know why this is so special right now. Why? I mean, look, it's a good solo. It's a decent song. <clears throat> But I started wondering, like, why? Why is it getting this reaction now? And, and uh, you know, you always record everything I do is, is you going for blood, you know, you, you go all in. But I found, I found what I thought was really interesting is that in this day and age over the last maybe 10 maybe 15 years more like 10 15 years how do we discover great guitar players we discover them sitting on a couch or sitting in your where you are and they have these guitar setups and they play amazing things technically amazing stuff that even i i don't even understand i i, I comment and i'm like fuck you that's amazing go fuck yourself i don't know what you're doing and but then rise comes out and All of a sudden, they see it, they smell it, but and more importantly, they see the emotion. They hear the emotion. It's physical. It's like when I, when the, the guitar player is like a Stevie Ray Vaughan. When he would bend a note, his whole body would bend. You know, it was like it's it's got to. And, and so when we're so used to hearing the technical side of things, that all of a sudden, I think people seeing a video with a solo in a song with a band with harmonies all going for blood you know it, it just it's yeah there's bands still out there yeah there's great guitar players still out there but i think from my era from my generation it seems like it's fresh it seems like people people seem like they were starved for it almost like i was getting texts from people i know not saying yeah great solo but saying thank you like thank you thank you what well, thank you for what and like thank you for bringing back rock and roll this way or, or, or even guitar playing in this way and and it wasn't just because i don't believe that the guitar solo was just because it was a guitar solo i believe that it was all the whole package what's underneath it i think even the visuals have a lot to do with it because if i did what the record company and my management suggested that everybody does now on TikTok and instagram and everything else which is what Before the album comes out, give them a tease of the solo. So what do you mean? Play this solo by myself with no band and, and but the single's coming out. It's going to be, yeah, but give them a, give them a taste of it. If I had done that over, I believe the solo would have been the same, but it would have sounded like a guitar with me just playing fast at the end doing these bends it would actually have been very boring like doing the the beginning of it they'd be like okay what's he doing it's so important that it's part of the song i don't give a shit if you're brian may eddie van halen jimmy page 
when those multi-tracks were all released, isolated tracks were all released on the internet throughout the years, and you heard some of these iconic solos by themselves, to me, they lost like 50% of the magic because we all perform, true guitar players perform to the song. We perform to what the song gives us, the culture, the tone, what the lyrics give us. So I believe that great players, If they, I don't brag about much, but my favorite thing about my own playing is not my playing. It's the fact that I try to play for the song, that I stay within a song within a song. So that way, when you do play a solo, it's super exciting and it's super passionate and people feel something. They don't just go, wow, that was shredding or that was fast that whatever. It was more like, wow, they might think it's because of the solo and the ripping part. I've been doing that for a long time. I mean, there's a technique I'm doing at the end of the solo that people are going, oh my God, it changed everything. I did that in Peacemaker Die on three sides, every story. I've been doing that stuff for a long time, but I think it's the timing right now. I think people are starved, you know, for it. And I also think the way the whole thing heightens the whole thing and, and the way it's, it's, it's the architecture of your solo is so great that it, all, of, all of a sudden everything stops and you start by yourself and then the band sets in and plays those accents and then you heighten it. And then it's, it's, I think... Hey, look, it's, think about it, though. Think about it, though. It, it's abso you're absolutely right. It is exciting. You know what it is? It's rock and roll. It's not the solo. It's rock and roll. It's the dang, dang, what is it? It's Zeppelin. It's, it's Van Halen. It's, 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 it's been happening for decades, but I think it's a little bit of a lost art because you're right. The band stops, the solo goes, where do we get that stuff from? Come on, man. These are the biggest bands in the world. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, all that stuff. It, it's not what, like we're sitting there doing it. I wasn't sitting there going, all right, let's do a Van Halen breakdown or a Zeppelin. But it's, it's in our DNA, right? It's, it's, it's who we are. And I think it was just refreshing to hear the excitement of that approach. And I keep saying it, the culture of rock and roll, the mythology, right? It's the mythology of it. People always think it's the guitar playing and it's always the shredding. No, it is not. It's the mythology of it. How, I don't know how many more times we're going to watch rip ripping guitar players sit on a chair and play. And I love it and I watch it and they're all fucking talented. I don't mean that in a bad way. But what excites me, I want those guys and most of them do play on stage, but I would love to hear those guys put together a fucking band and write some songs and craft, take their skills and craft it within songs and solos. And I'm talking to all those guitar players now that are out there that they know I follow them. I, I comment, but man, sometimes it's more, it's easier to shred, but sometimes it's more difficult to put a composition within a composition. And like you said, crafting a solo that feels like it's a song within a song itself. And I think I'd love to hear, I would love to challenge all the guitar players that, that uh, the younger guys say everything like, man, put a fucking band together, go out there and play, write some amazing songs. You have that talent. And, and, uh, and there is still, by the way, there's still great bands out there. Some of the, some of the, the heavier stuff like five finger death punch and the guitar player and the James and all those guys, these guys play the most innovative solos. So I'm not by means saying that I'm the guy and I'm the one that, you know, that's doing it. All I'm doing is carrying that torch a little bit, you know, from my generation of rock and roll. You know, a lot of people were saying, man, you're the, you're the heir to the throne of Van Halen now. That's, that's you. You're the guy. And I'm like, no, nobody's the heir to the throne of Eddie Edward Van Halen. The throne is sitting there by itself with all his guitars on it and his music will live forever. And I wouldn't be playing what I'm playing right now if it wasn't for Edward. So nobody's taking that throne. Not me, not Steve Vai, not Jimmy Page. They all got their own thrones. And all I'm trying to, all I'm hoping for is that that solo comes out and Edward's like, you know, looking down and saying, you know, you done good, kid. Keep it, keep rocking. That's it. That's all I care about. Yeah. But the Eddie Van Halen comparison isn't so far fetched in regards that you are also a very oh. virtuoso player. Um, that that that's embedded in, in, in the importance of a song and that also sees the importance of a song. I mean, that's in, 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 in mainstream rock kind of rare these days, unfortunately. It is rare, but Edward, Edward did something where he didn't just play riffs and stuff like the previous guys. And then they took a solo. He made rhythm playing fun. So all, all I wanted to do with rise in this album is to make sure I, if I'm bringing anything back, because it's been 15 years since we did an album, yeah. but I'm, I'm trying to bring back the joy and the passion 
and the emotion of guitar playing. And I'm not trying to do it. I've always done it, but because it's been so long, I guess I'm trying to do it. You know, if there's anything I would say that I'm proud of that all the reactions from Rise and the solo is I can't wait till they hear the rest of it, first of all, if they love that. I don't even think it's the best song or the best solo on the album, in my opinion. But the fact that they love that, I'm excited for everybody to hear the album. And, and so they can see that those influences are there that joy and that fun and the guitar playing part of it you know what i mean and, and and hope to inspire even keep that inspiring the younger generations that to do that yeah talking <clears throat> sorry i'm talking about uh, talking about 15 years um when did you realize it's time for a new extreme record when did you know it was time to come back and start working on new stuff Well, we never thought about coming back and we never thought about staying away. You know, you just organically life goes on and we were doing shows constantly. But, you know, other than the fact that I really secretly wanted to beat out Guns N' Roses Chinese Democracy album, I wanted it to be the longest album ever made for Extreme. Uh, and I think we won. I think we, we won that award. But it wasn't that reason. It was... I said to Gary when I was, you know, 19, 20, 21, that I said, I never want to release an album, a song, a solo, a melody that I don't absolutely love and am proud of. That I, that I love it to the point that if Eddie Van Halen himself or Brian May or Freddie Mercury walked in the room, would I have the balls to play him that song? Yes, I would. I'd be like, hey, check this out. Confidently, not egotistically. So we were writing stuff. We could have had an album out in two, you know, in, in 2011, 2013, 2014, but the songs were good to me, but I just, I didn't have that feeling of wanting to share it with the world, that, that excitement, that pride, that fun. And it wasn't until we wrote three or four songs on this album, it was like Rise, Banshee, Hashtag Rebel, Mask, Save Me, some of the rock, Thicker Than Blood, some of the, the rock stuff that made me go, okay, there it is. There's the foundation to the house we were looking for. Now let's build it with the classic extreme stuff and left turns and right turns and all that stuff. Uh, but if you feel that little bit of pride that you used to when you were 12, like when you, you'd create something and you'd show your brother or show your best friend or another musician, if you get that feeling again, then it's time to put an album out. That's it. Is it true that uh, Eddie was visiting you at the studio, but you didn't want to play him the stuff in the early stages of, of, of the record? He just came by. He was at lunch with Gary. I was actually recording the Rise solo. And I always tell people, do not bother me. Everybody knows in my band, do not ever go in the studio when Nuno's recording or doing his guitar. I like to be by myself, no assistant, no nothing. And Gary kept bothering me on my phone and kept ringing and ringing. And he's like, come downstairs, come downstairs to the front of the house. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm recording. And then I finally went downstairs. Uh, thank you. And I finally went downstairs and uh, I was kind of upset that he was bothering me. And I opened the door and I come out and he's out there with Edward out in front of my house. And uh, I was like, okay, that's a good reason to interrupt, interrupt my playing. And uh, we talked and he was playing a little bit of the Wolfie stuff in the car for Gary as well, his new album. And he also talked about Van Halen coming back you know, soon with the original band with Michael and touring. I was like, wow, that's incredible. And then of course he's like, so you guys are recording? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He goes, wow, well, I, I got to hear some stuff. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's not done yet. And, you know, and I kind of, I regret it now. I mean, it wasn't ready, but I regret it because he never came back to listen to it for obvious reasons. He was sick and he passed away. And, uh, you know, it's sad that I never got to play him this stuff, but hopefully he's, uh, he's listening to it. Yeah. To it. <clears throat> how's the working process for extreme how do how you uh, what's the collaboration like in the band how do you approach making a record like this uh, it's different i mean you know we, we we don't all go together and camp out for three months in a studio somewhere um uh but you know we we do it in spurts you know we do two or three songs here and there in my studio here up at the house. And yeah, that's how we do it. And we write and we collaborate in person. We don't do anything via like, you know, files and shit like that. It's always, it's always in the same room. And coming, coming back to the rise solo or to any solo, but let's take the rise solo for, as an example. Um, as you said, it's a composition within a composition. So how do you approach composing a solo part like that within the framework I mean, of the song? 
for me, like I said, the most important thing you can do is the song, the song, the melody, the lyrics, the, the, the tempo is a gift to the solo. And if people that are playing solos don't realize they're missing out on all these gifts, meaning it's telling you what it wants. It's telling you what the solo should be and what the energy of the solo is and what the tonality of it melodically, it's feeding it, it's there. It's like it's like the rhythm section's giving it to you. The choruses that you're hearing, you should be feeding off those melodies. Um, and that's what it was for Rise, it's just like, what is the energy of that song? You know, what is the performance like? What is the physicality? What is the emotion like? So for me, I just, I, I don't sit there and calculate it. You know, I stand up, play the song, and I rip through the solo. And then I let it go, and then I do another rip through the solo, and then maybe do three. And then I go back and I go like, I don't, I, don't, I blacked out, I don't know what I did. Let me see what happened. And then you'll find some incredible sections where you're like, oh, fuck, I like that because, but it's all spontaneous. Even if I combine them and, and put them together, oh, I like that section, this section, this section, they were all still done in the same spirit of that live take and that live feeling. So that's kind of like, you know, the painting that I try to do, you know? Mm -hmm. As an advice to younger guitar players or people who try to find their own voice, uh, how, I mean, because... You have such a distinct style since the early stages, this high energy in your face kind of playing. Uh, you know that it's you. How did you develop that? And, and how do what, what do you say? How could uh, oh. young guitar players develop their own voice? You, no matter what you do, whatever, no matter what your influences are, for me, like Van Halen, Brian May, Jimmy Page, Randy Rhodes, Aldo Miola, whatever, no matter what those influences are, you never want to be them you just you, they're like tools and sounds and colors right colors that you paint with and you don't try to do it on purpose that's the most important thing they just come out after a while but no matter what you do no matter what influences you have no matter what strings you use no matter what guitar you use no matter what amp you use no matter what you always have to play your personality be your personality and and and, and, and you know when you listen to a brian may solo and You literally see him playing it. You see how he thinks. You see his body. You see his physicality. You see Brian May as a person, how he talks. Is he passionate when he talks? Is he quiet when he talks? Is he... You have to play your personality. It's in sports like that, too. It's like football players. You know, you see a Cristiano Ronaldo, you see how he talks and how he's like, you know, and he's cocky and he's this. He's like that on the football field as well. You know, in American football, Tom Brady, you see his passion, how he plays. You have to be who you are. That way, you will always be strong. Nobody, there is no other you. Everybody can go like, oh, the rice solo. I hear some Edward. I hear a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But like you said now, it's you doing it, though. It's you being you. It's because I allow myself to be myself selfishly. It has to be very selfish and very in a bubble. You cannot, young guitar players that are coming up, do all the work to be better. But once you become and you have all the tools, you have to write and create within your personality. If, you know, if you're a softer guy, you're a softer guy. It's okay. If you're a harder guy, if you have multiple personality, different things. And we all have different emotions, but I think you have to play those emotions out. Be yourself and it'll, it'll be all yours, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, guitar players these days are flooded with information. I mean, I remember when I when I started out, I bought like a, I had to go to a bookstore and buy a Steve Weiss transcription book for a lot of money and maybe buy a VHS tape and, and look at his fingers, what he does. But these days you're overloaded with information. You can look at everything. You can learn everything. Do you think that makes it kind of more difficult for, for people to find their voice? Because copying is a bit made, made a bit easier in, in some regards. And well i do remember one thing i remember when i was younger and somebody asked me this question like how do you develop your own thing and i said well it's important that when i was learning a jimmy page riff off an album or a cassette or a cd i was listening to it and what i mean by that is i would hear it and then i'd pick up my guitar and i'd go and i'd play it in my head I believed I was playing it like him. 
I didn't have him teaching me. I didn't have anybody showing me. I didn't have a video showing exactly where he played it, what amp, what sound. I immediately interpreted that and played it how I would play Jimmy Page or I would play Brian May. And probably my limitations of information was the best gift I ever had. Do I wish when I was learning that I had the fucking internet right now where everybody can show me like, how do you play Hotel California? Here it is, like 12 different people showing you how to play Hotel California. Wow, great for what you want to do, but might be harder to find your own path because now you're getting exactly how they did it, exactly where it is on the neck. Exactly, so much information that you got to be careful not to, excuse me, just clone what you're doing. I thought I was playing Edward like he was. I was so wrong. I was playing in a different part of the deck. I was playing different stuff. And when I saw him live or whatever and saw videos, I'm like, oh my God. But that gave me my own interpretation of Edward, you know? So the little inaccuracies between what you tried to do and what you actually did were formative for developing their own style. And I think so, because I think what it does, it forces you to be creative, not just copy. It forces you to think and like, what sounds good to you? What sounds like Edward to you? You know, it, your what's your version of Edward? You know, what's your version of, of Brian May? Instead of going, I know exactly how he played it and I'm going to play it just like him. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> We already talked about Rye as the first singer. Um, now two more singers are coming out. Two singers at the same time, which is Banshee and Hashtag Revel. And I'd like to start off talking about Banshee, which to me it gives like a kind of old school Aerosmithy kind of vibe, very uh, very riff oriented, really amazing song. Can you talk a bit about the song? I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we have time. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the Banshee video or not this morning when it came out, uh, but it's uh, it, when you break down an extreme song or any band song, I think. Your, your main ingredients are in all the songs. They're in all of them. It's literally like, you know, I think Zach Wilde described it the best. It's like, it's like the ingredients of a soup, he says, you know, it's like you, 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 you always, you can, you can go song by song and you can say, oh, rise, you know, and you're tasting the, the rise soup. And it's like, wow, there's, there's a lot of, it's a strong amount of Metallica in there, you know, like the influences and Pantera and then and, and, and Disturbed and all the heavier stuff that you guys really liked, you know, that kind of four on the floor. But yet I still taste a little bit of Van Halen in there and there's a lighter side and a hint of this. With every song you could do that. But I always think that you find always the same ingredients in every song of the band. I think there's a little bit of Aerosmith in all the songs. Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 70%. There's always, always a, a, a bit of Queen in there. There's always a bit of of all the artists that we grew up with. There's artists that I love, like Stone Temple Pilots. You know, there's artists that, that I love, you know, that, you know, Muse even. There's this, you're always going to have, you, you never stop growing and you never stop eating. You are what you eat. And every time you can choose to like the bands you like, and I can say out loud that, oh, it's only these four bands. But the fact of the matter is, is that even stuff you don't like goes in. Even you get into a car or cab and there's a Britney Spears song on and it's like, oh, baby, baby. Dun, dun. And then guess what? One day I'll be up in the studio, maybe in a month, maybe in a year, maybe in 10 years. And I'm going to subliminally write this group that goes, boom, boom, boom. And I don't even know why it was a fucking Britney Spears song that influenced me. Are you short? Like, we are what we eat. And I think that's what the beauty of it is to be open to all these different tastes and different things. And I think you'll always be more creative instead of saying, I don't like pop. I don't listen to pop. Are you fucking kidding me? I love pop. I love Michael Jackson. I love pop. I like Rihanna stuff. I, I listen to everything. But, you know, Black Sabbath as well. And I think if you get those things in there, you're going to be so much, the meal that you make is going to be so much tastier, right? I've seen a live stream with uh, Instagram live with John Mayer a while ago, where you also chatted with him a bit via, uh, where you texted him a bit. And, and he talked about the similarities between his experience with a ballad, with, in his case, A Buddy's in Wonderland, and with your very famous ballad, More Than Words. Um, and I was wondering, I mean, as much as More Than Words has been a huge blessing career-wise, I was wondering, did you ever feel it, it also gave you a sense of confinement in some regards? First, first, first of all, I would tell John Mayer that 
more than words is much better than wonderland first of all. <laughs> that's the first thing i would say but uh but um anybody who tells you like you have a big hit like that and it was a problem is a liar are you fucking kidding me like oh i'm sorry i'm so sorry that a song you wrote i wrote that i love and that I actually loved enough to put on the album connected with the whole planet and went to number one from the u.s to israel oh it's just so devastating it's just so hard you know it's 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 terrible i mean come on that's the fucking dream that's the dream you want to connect your music with people and the truth is is people say oh y'all, people only know you for more than words no they don't the people that know us for more than words are the people that should only know us for more than words because that's all they do is listen to singles and that's like but the fans know you know and by the way every time you have a hit all it does is bring more attention to your other music to your live shows allows you to play more tour more uh and, and work more so let me think yeah that, that on this side it's a hit more than words is not a hit and i'm working at burger king hmm <laughs> let me see which one which one was which one was worse i don't know I mean, there are some artists who, who or, or some actors who don't like a role anymore, like the role they, they got famous for or something. Oh, you know what? Or go fucking cry to somebody else. Poor you. <laughs> you, had a, you had a big successful film that you were dreaming about your whole life that made you a huge star. I'm so sorry for you and your pain and that fame. <laughs> and it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. Because if you were or I was sleeping in a rehearsal space like I was and that actor was sitting in a cafe fucking serving everybody dreaming of being that he better think about that job that he had before that where he would give anything to have that big show and now he's like oh my god i'm so tired of being considered you know come on stop it stop it yeah that's how i <laughs> amazing to write a better to write a song that's still everywhere decades later i mean it's quite something it's, it's a blessing it's amazing it's a it's quite a feat all that all that's all that's telling you is not that you did something wrong it's telling you that something that music people don't realize that you know when i watched i worked on banshee recorded banshee rise hashtag rebel mixed it produced it i directed the videos with the partner with my company ae i edited the videos colored the videos the second i saw it today when it was released on U youtube it was no longer mine more than words is not an extreme song the day we release the song it's theirs it's yours it's gone it's your soundtrack it's the it, it's not our soundtrack anymore we just perform the song but we don't drive around listening to our fucking music our music is not the soundtrack to our own lives our music is just our creativity so Those songs are gone now. Once that album comes out June 9th, when people say, oh, you know, it, it, it becomes their soundtrack. And that's what you want. So More Than Words connects with that many people, whether it's a prom or a wedding or a funeral or, you know, while they're fucking in the background. I don't give a shit. It's their song now, what it does to them and what it says to them. It's no longer mine. It's no longer Gary's. It's no longer Extremes. We, it's, it's, it's children that you raise and they go off and live their own lives. That's it. It's over. On to the next one. But how is it when you let them loose into the world and you hear your own music? Or, or can you listen to your own music? Do you like that? No. Huh. no. I can listen to it around the same time that we're releasing it because it's still where I want to be creatively and psychologically. But going back and listening to old music, I call it a, uh, it's like looking at a, uh, a photographic, like a, a sonic photo album, you know, you go back and you look at a picture of you when you were, I don't know, 20 years ago. And you're like, Oh my God, what, how could I wear that? I was wearing that. And my hair was like that. And sometimes you're embarrassed and sometimes you might be proud of a moment. That's what it's like listening to songs from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because you're not the same person anymore. Most of the time you're like, Oh, it's too fast. Oh my God. I wouldn't have done that now. Oh, the guitar sound. Like everybody does that. Everybody like, I've heard Edward complain about his greatest albums. Go, oh my God, the guitar sound on the first album was terrible. And like, 
It's a great, that changed my life. It changed guitar as we knew it. And he's trying to do everything but that sound because that's the way it is. You grow, you change, you know? You briefly mentioned Rihanna when you said, when you talked about pop music. Uh, you toured with her for quite some years, I think three or four years. What was the experience like and how important for you is to, to, to collaborate with artists that maybe aren't from the place where you're from, stylistically or musically? I think it's like I said, extreme is like the mothership, right? It's, it's, it's my career. It's my life. It's, it's how I, it's how people know me. And, and it's, it's what I owe from any of my success or any of my fans or anything else is extreme, but extreme is a relationship just like it is a, a person. It's four relationships. And with four relationships, try, try being married to one person then do four people it's it's this life comes in there's there's kids there's babies there's marriages there's uh deaths there's change and i i think you go off sometimes you need a break from those people everybody's got that friend that's like man i've, I've been with you for months i gotta go out and i'm tired of you i'm sick of you i need i need a break and i think that's what it is you know you go out and you work with other artists and you get creative you need to reset You know, it's, it's, it's your, it's your way of having a vacation from extreme or my way, should I say, is to, it's not because I don't love extreme and I don't want to do it. Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you just need to do something different and try something different. That's all. Mm -hmm. How would you describe, how do you see the guitar in popular music these days? How would you say it's the state of guitar? I mean, there's a lot going on in the guitar world again. I don't know. For me, I, I, I don't really keep up with that in the state of the world of guitar. I'm in, I'm in my own bubble most of the time. And I know that, you know, on, in popular music, guitar is not the instrument of choice, of course, in pop music. But you know what? There's something about rock and roll that seems more attractive and cooler and more dangerous when it's un, a bit more underground to me and a bit more like clubs and theaters and not like not like the biggest rock bands in the world doing like arenas there's something about it being grounded and, and going back to its roots you know what i mean like and it has to rebuild in a way you know and i, I like that I, you know that's how i see it. but the good news is about the internet if we thought guitar was dead we were wrong if we thought that kids weren't picking up guitars we were wrong uh they're there they're out there the future of rock and roll is there i just think The biggest danger they're going to have in, rock, in keeping rock and roll alive is the things we were talking about early, which is technology, what me and you are doing now. Me and you are Zooming right now. We used to do this in person. You know, we used to fly out and have conversations in person, talk and make the effort. And that's the only thing I fear. This is great. I'm glad it's, it, we use it as a tool. But there's a part of me that worries about it's easier for guitar players You take away the technology, they'd be like, how am I going to get my music out there? I got to put a band together. I got to go play with musicians or I got to go play clubs and get out there and, 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 and just be in it, be in it, the rock and roll culture. I think sometimes technology might have a way of getting in the way of that. Meaning what? Wow, I can just be a guitar player and sit in my room and get followers and, 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 and get likes and, and, and even advertising and all those things, which is a new generation way of doing it. And I don't, I don't, I respect it and I understand it, but I think for real rock and roll itself and guitar driven rock and roll, I just hope a lot of these players that would be in great bands and maybe the, be the new Led Zeppelins and the new Beatles and the, the future David Bowie's and, you know, I hope they get a chance to be born and not have technology get in the way of stopping that mm -hmm. if that makes any sense yeah. i mean it's what you said in the beginning um people <clears throat> the reactions to your first to your new guitar solo, to to the rise guitar solo this thirst that people are feeling i think uh, that that thirst about like okay here's here's guitar music but here's a, re a real solo but in the context not of a guy sitting on a couch as you said but like in a in a rock song of a huge band of a band that's been played on the radio and here's a guitar solo i think there's there's a lot of uh, eagerness for people that that uh, guitar music comes back like that i think yeah it's 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 what it's it's playing guitar 
makes you a musician. Playing drums makes you a musician. Playing bass, musician, keyboard, musician. If you just want to be a musician, be a musician. But if you want to be a rocker, if you want to be, you know, uh, more than a musician to me in the sense of like, you got to sacrifice. You got to get out. Of, you got to get out. You got to get out. Find find your John Paul Jones. Find your you know your your drummer. Find you know you know it takes it takes work hustle. It, it takes a want. You have to see yourself playing Madison Square Garden. I used to have trouble going to concerts when I was young. I'd go to Boston Garden. I'd be up there watching Ozzy, and I was nervous the whole time. Like. I was like itchy. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like being in the crowd. I was enjoying it, but I knew like, why am I feeling like this? It bothered me that I wasn't on stage. It bothered me that I had to sit in a seat and watch these guys play. All I wanted to do was fucking play. So I was always visualizing myself up there, not just playing guitar, but living it, the culture of it. And I think that's the danger of internet, Instagram, all this stuff. And I remember there's a, there's a, there's a, a, one of the newer guitar players, Matteo Sassato. I don't know if you know who he is, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. I remember he, he kind of, he made, he, he reached a million, more than I do or extreme combined, like a, over a million followers just on Instagram playing like when they were like, remember those 10 second pieces or 30 second pieces. Cause that's all you could do. He exploded in that world. And yeah. then I remember, then I, because I, I know him a little bit, and then I remember he disappeared. He just, I can't fucking do this anymore. He just shut down his account, went away, because he said to me, you know, he said he announced it, and he said on the site, he goes, I don't, I don't want to be that guy only. I feel like it's not, you know. I even spoke to him, for instance, about. I met with him once. I said, let me produce your solo album. You would be the most incredible solo album because you're so creative, rhythmically and melodically and beautifully. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. And we never got to do it because I think. You know, not only he got busy, he's touring Bruno Mars, he's doing a bunch of stuff, but I also think it takes time to, when you come from that world to finish a song. When you're not used to finishing a piece, you're used to a little, a lot of, you're used to a thousand pieces where I don't do that. I don't do pieces. I either finish a song and I finish it in 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or else it's fucking never going to see it again. And it's got to be melody and everything happens all at once. So I think if you're not used to that, I think it can be, you know, uh, it can bum you out a little bit. And I, even with a guy like Mateus, I know the best of y is yet to come from him. And I'm hoping that that shutdown and that reset that he had is what a lot of people are feeling, which is like, you can get caught up in followers and likes, you know, you can get lost in a world where everybody tells you how great you are all the time. But if you fucking go and play a club, you'll find out quick how fucking nobody cares about you because there's nobody in the club <laughs> to see you. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. it. You know, being online, you talk into the whole world. You start a band in fucking Hollywood or Boston. Good luck. You got to go to clubs and you got to make people come and see you. And you have social media now to help you get them there, of course. But it's a grind. It's a build. It's building a fucking house. And I'm not sure how much the younger generation wants to work. <laughs> you know work that hard and sacrifice that much we'll soon find out you know? help, like i said i don't mean i don't mean i don't mean just playing guitar and practicing and getting better guitar you can do that at any time and on your own time i get that i'm talking about committing to building something a career a fucking band uh, i don't care if it's a solo project whatever it is but just a lifetime a, 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 a career a long journey you know do we have a certain practice routine that's a guitar player um, no, I am. I don't even fucking practice. I don't practice at all. I haven't practiced in decades. Oh, I, I play. I play guitar. I stopped. I, I once I had the tools that I needed to practice to get to what I'm able to do. I I I I didn't feel like I needed any more tools for what I'm creating and what I need to do. It's not that I don't think I can get better, or I don't think I just didn't want to get any better. I didn't want to. You know, I said, this is my world. This is what I live in. This is my writing. This is my limitations as a solo player. This is my techniques as a solo player. And I'm good with that. I'm one of the last of one of the last guys that think that is 
is still playing guitar and 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 in, in, in trying to be creative in a pentatonic world, in the rock and roll kind of square box world. There isn't many of us left. The stuff that we're hearing now, man, of the guitar players I'm doing now are mind blowing and the fucking shit that they're doing and all, you know, picking and multi, all, all the fucking shit just, it, it makes me like, okay, I'm gonna stick to my little toy that I'm working with over here. So I know my world and I know what it is. Of course I practice when I'm prepping for a tour or before a show, warming. I don't practice, I warm up. I, I get I get I get in shape, right? Which is a form of practice, you know. Yeah. But I don't sit here all day trying to like, I don't know, just trying to be a machine, you know. Well then thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoy talking to you. It was really a pleasure yes. and a fantastic Same record. Here, man. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. I really Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate it. I'll see you on the road.